Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, welcome to Tuesday Night Thrive, guys. These mentorship calls are really designed to help you guys get to the next level in your life and become the best version of yourself. And, you know, these, these calls, you know, I started doing these Thrive calls. I don't even remember how long ago. It just started off as me and, and really just like probably 15 to 20 people jumping on and I was spitting some fire. And now it's grown into, you know, a way bigger call, getting way bigger leaders on so much better knowledge and, and information being poured into people. And it's just really exciting to, to have watched this call grow. And it, it, it just, the reason why I started it, guys, I want you to know this, is because it was these calls that really got me to believe in myself and got me to get to the next level uh, in my business. In, in my previous company, they had uh, weekly Sunday night conference calls. It wasn't even on Zoom. It was a phone call and you just literally listened in. And so I'd plug, plug my headphones in. That was when it still had a plug in. <clears throat> and I just put my ear, earbuds in and I would listen to these Sunday night conference calls from top leaders in the company every Sunday night. And, it, and I heard different stories, different knowledge, different business tactics every single Sunday. And it's really what helped me get to the next level because I started learning how to be a professional in this industry. And so I'll just tell you guys, like I just said, showing up showing up to these calls and showing up to your business every single day is what's going to get you to the next level. Okay. You guys have to understand that that is step number one. All right. So congrats again for you guys being on here and, and doing what it takes to win at a high level. But uh, I'm going to bring my buddy Joey on here. You guys all know who he is and I'm pretty, pretty much, we're going to just, uh, he's going to do most of the talking, but I'm going to kind of just give him the six steps of being a dominator. Okay. I'm going to give, give him the six steps of being a dominator, and then he's going to break them down for you and, and explain all of them on his viewpoint of them. Okay. How he views these six steps of being a dominator and how he applies them to his life every single day. So I'm going to bring Mr. Joey Wilson on here. Uh, let me spotlight. Perfect. What's going on, bro? Let's go, baby. Let's go. It's game time. Hey, type, type some fire emojis in the chat. If y'all are fired up, let's see. Listen, guys, I'm proud of all of you for being on this call. Uh, we're fired up. We're excited to be here and where this thing is going. Um, there's a lot of people that I've brought into this organization, into this team, you know, through over the past four years that if they just would have stuck it out. They would, have, they would have been in a way better position than they are today. And you guys are the ones really building this business, staying focused, staying committed, even when you know maybe it's not going your way, even when maybe you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but you're on this call and that's a step because like AJ said, it was calls just like this when we weren't having any success and we're like, dude, who else am I supposed to show? And like, I got bills coming up and I better figure it out quick. And it was calls like this that gave us just seed of belief to go out there and take this thing to the next level. And uh, I believe it's just staying around the fire. Uh, I was always around the fire. And I know I can say that for AJ too. We just have always been around the fire. If they said, hey, we have a Sunday night call, be on it. I was on it every single time. I'll never forget it. I mean, I was either in between presentations or I was coming home uh, from doing presentations. And I would put it, put it on in my car and on my drive home, I would listen to the Sunday night leadership call. Um, if they said, come to the Super Saturday training downtown St. Paul or Minneapolis, I was there every single Saturday that we had it. If they said, hey, fly to this state, we have a national convention, I was there. Whatever I had to do, if there was a Tuesday and Thursday night event that we had, I was there every single time because I had to stay around the fire. Didn't matter how much success I was having. I need my batteries recharged. I need to stay close to the fire so I can stay fired up. Love it, so I appreciate love you guys for hopping on this call. <laughs> and I'm excited to take this thing to the next level with you going into 2022 and all the way through. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, real quick, before we get into the six steps of, you know, being a dominator, being somebody that just completely dominates your field year after year, the 1% of the 1%. I mean, what, what in your eyes does a dominator look like? Obviously, you followed a lot of dominators in their field and you've studied them and dissected them. What do you think one is your viewpoint on what a dominator is and what's like, obviously we're going to talk about what separates them, but what is like, 
I mean, I mean, a big key. You could probably answer this better than me just because you just, I mean, you're always in the books and listening to the audios. I mean, you study the greats though. I mean, I've, guys, I've never seen anyone better. That's, you know, Joe, Joey's not the, the, the big reader. I know he still, he reads enough books to understand the information that he wants to learn, but this guy's on YouTube and Instagram studying the, the, the greatest of the greats not only in network marketing, but in just all these different fields. So I think that's why you've learned to become the dominator is because you've studied so many of them. Listen, I, I've just, ever since I was young, I've always been wheeling and dealing and, and making moves. And I don't know what it is. I, I wish my wife was in here and she could sit down and tell you, but I'm just obsessed with winning and you know, figure it out what it is in your life. And I know we're going to talk about desire probably, but um, okay, I, mean, I just got a burning desire. desire. You, you can go over that if you want to go right into it. The, the, the first step, guys, is to, to being a dominator is desire. I mean, Tony Robbins talks about it. He says, Tony Robbins believes desire is the, the most important step to success because if you don't have hunger, you're not going to win. So yeah, if you, if you want to just go right into the first step of being a dominator, which is desire, go ahead. Right. And so for me, it was, there was different levels to it, right? When I first got started, um, I had a desire to do something great because I was locked up when I was 19, got out when I was 21. And I'm like, dude, I just put my family through hell. They did everything for me growing up. And I have a desire to show them that I'm not just some mess up and I can be successful. So that was a, a starting point for me. So people are like, oh, dude, that sucks. You got locked up. To be honest with you, it was the best thing that ever happened to me because it got me out of that lifestyle and it, and it changed my mindset. Like now I have to go do something with my life because I don't want to be looked at like this screw up. So that was the first starting point for me to have desire. Uh, and then it was desire to, I hated being told what to do, which was part of the reason why I screwed up when I was in my teens anyways. So I had a desire to get out of that job. So you got to figure out what your desire is um, on one of those Sunday night calls one of my old buddies uh, from my previous company, his name's Travis and, and Byron Schrag, uh, another top earner over there said, how'd you do it? How did you put in 300 and something people in a, 20, in a 48 hour window to hit that next level? He said, Byron, listen, I had no other option. He said, I was $175,000 in debt. I was in, in process of declaring bankruptcy with my wife. And then God decides, to give us twins. My wife got, got pregnant with twins. He's like, what was I supposed to do? I had no other option. He said, every day I didn't work hard is another day I had to work hard. And as I'm listening to these audios, I'm like, dude, this is crazy. Bro, I have to step up my energy. I have to step up my game. And I have to go after this thing and have that mindset like he has. Like, dude, every day I don't work hard is another day that I have to work hard. This business is built off speed. So for me, I just figure out what pisses me off or what gives me the energy to go build this thing. And really what it was for me was I wanted to prove to my family and prove to myself and prove to my wife, Britt, who was my girlfriend, who started basically dating me right as I got out of jail, this Christian girl that it's never been exposed to that type of lifestyle. And she like saw something in me. I'm like, okay, I have to do something big. And uh, it was this industry that gave a kid like me with ADHD a, 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 a path to run on, a track to run on. And so then I see these ranks and these levels and I'm like, and, and my mom never understood what we did for literally years. She's like, I still don't, she probably still doesn't get it. It's all good. But I like three years in, I was like, mom, the best way I can explain this to you, it's like a fun game you can make a lot of money at. And I, I just love this. Some people love video games and leveling up in video games. I love, I'm obsessed with leveling up in life. And so when I see that rank chart, the comp plan, I'm like, dude, I will claw my way to the top, no matter how long it takes, no matter how many people quit, no matter how many people talk shit, no matter how many leaders leave and go to a different company and think they have a better thing over there because they weren't having success here. I'm telling you, the grass isn't greener anywhere else. This is the comp plan that I'm going to reach the top of. And so I'm going to do whatever it takes because I made that decision. So I don't know. Your, your answer is what, what was the, the question? What, uh, it was, it was desire. Like what, what, what is, what is 
the the desire level of a dominator like what i mean you kind of answered it it's it's what fuels like like a dominator has something that fuels them it, it it's a why it's a yeah it, it, okay like, perfect like, perfect and i could trick myself when i never had kids i said i'm going to give my future kids the best lives on the planet if you have nothing else to give you a burning desire if you think that there's nothing like oh nothing crazy has ever happened to me or or I don't really know, man. I just, I, you know, everything was kind of handed to me in life. Maybe that's not the case, but maybe it is for you. If nothing else, do it for your future kids. For real. I always said it on the calls. I'm doing this for my future family, period. I want, by the time I have kids, I want to have complete freedom to be able to give them the best lifestyle on the planet. I don't want my wife going to work every single day. I don't want to have to go to work every single day and drop our kid off at daycare. There's just no way that's happening. And so by the time we got here, because I said it over and over and over and over and took action and used that as my fuel, my burning desire in my heart, here we are. My daughter's one and a half years old and we do whatever we want every single day. And that is the lifestyle I created in my mind years ago. Yeah. I mean, uh, it kind of reminds me, I, I said it on the call last week. I ended the call with it, but it's, it's what Matt Morris talks about. Uh, he, he said it. I think you were at the, were you at the Louisville training back in like 20? Sure was. Yeah. At the end of his, at the end of his talk, he said, you know, if you have a strong why and a strong desire, nothing will pull you off the course. Nothing will distract you. If you're, if you have a strong enough desire, you're going to stay right here. Nothing, you won't look left or right. You'll just stay here, which is what makes you a dominator is like, you, you never get distracted. It's just, you always stay here. And he said at that training, he said, you know, if you're more interested than going out, if you're more interested in going out and drinking with your buddies, if you're more interested in playing video games or watching TV or watching sports with your buddies, if that is more appealing to you than creating generational wealth for you and your future family or your current family and creating freedom for yourself, most importantly, I won't call you a loser, but my friend, you're not a winner. And when he, when he said that, I was like, damn, that is the realest thing in the world. And one thing we were talking about earlier is a, a big time real estate guy I follow. Him and his wife are on this podcast and he goes, listen, I, I'm a weird guy. I don't people with people that people. I just don't do that. I don't like go hang out with people just to hang out. He goes, it's awkward. And I don't even know how to do that. He goes, because when I do that, he's like, I've tried it and I can't do it because when I'm doing it, I'm having anxiety like, yo, I got to get this shit done. I got this to have. I got this to do, this to do, this to do. I have moves to make. So, and I totally relate to that. I sent it to Brit and I'm like, this is me. And I even sent it to my brother. I said, Hey, you're ever trying to figure out you know, who I am, like what I am about. This is me. Like if, if I don't come and hang out, you know, too often or anything, I just have moves to make for, for again, for a season um, or maybe a lifetime. It doesn't really matter, but uh, I, I just don't people with people that people I people with you guys. That's it. That's why I want all of you to go hit platinum 2000 or above and, and get down here to Miami. That's why I love. Hey, that's why I flew Dalton down here the other week. Cause the dude's just a freaking has the mindset of a winner. That's why I want Bobby Mills to get down here. Cause he's got the mindset of a winner. That's why I always have people that come down here. They're people that have one thing on their mind and it's not to just hang out. It's to yo, Let's grab some content, post it, and get in the trenches and put people in the system. That's just what I love to do because I run at a 10 on a treadmill. I know what it was like to be broke. I know what it was like to be in, in the mud, just being a complete screw up. And now what I've realized is if you run on a treadmill at a 10, you, you can't, all of the problems are behind you. And if you're running at a 10 and you try to turn around, you're, you're gonna get hurt because you're gonna fall off the treadmill. You know, most people are running in life at a three. So when drama and problems are happening behind them, you can look behind you and keep walking at your, th your speed of three. But if you're running at a 10, there's no problem. There's nothing. there's nothing. So it's like, I just know that my life will keep getting better and better and better. And it's just, life just keeps getting easier and easier and easier. Because if you do what's hard now, life will be easy. And if you do what's easy now, life will be hard. 100%. Um, so we're going to the next step. So first one, if you guys didn't write it down, was desire. Uh, you have you have to find something that's going to fuel you every single day. And like Joey said, if you have to make something up in your head, then that's what you got to do. And you have to make it real. Um, but if you, I, I think Tony Robbins is right. If 
you don't have desire, if you don't have that burning hunger within you to actually go in, it doesn't, these other six, five steps don't even matter. Um, but the next one is environment. So we don't need to go, obviously this is a pretty easy one. So you don't have to go crazy in detail, but just talk about the environment of a dominator. Yeah. And so we were making this chart earlier of what it takes to, to be a dominator or have a lot of success in this industry or in business in general or whatever, whatever your field is. And environment was one of those topics because it's, it's important. You know, for me, when I, when I started this journey, I was living at my parents' house and it was great. I, I had the basement, I was doing my thing, but I had to get out sometimes because my mom, again, she didn't understand what I did. So she's like, are you just going to sit around on your computer all day? I'm like, George, if you saw my Facebook chat, I'm blowing people up working on getting people in the system right now. She didn't understand it. So she's like, well, could you lift a finger around the house? And I'm, you know, I'm 22 years old, just got out of jail. I'm like, I'm trying to grind right now. Like, and so I'd have to just get out of the house and go to a, st go to a Starbucks and you know, your environment, you don't have to be living in a, a dope condo in Miami to have a, a good environment to win in. You can, maybe you have an office space. Maybe you have a specific place in your home where you can really get focused. Or if you don't make, make a Starbucks your office and, and get focused there. I've built this thing out of Starbucks. Uh, me and Kessler, when me and Kessler started running, it was out of a Panera bread. We were there pretty much every single day. And I just posted up there. Even, even when I had my condo in Minneapolis, I still posted up at the Panera every single day because I, I wanted to get out of the house, break up the day. It keeps my energy up uh, instead of just kind of being lethargic, sitting at your home all day long throughout the winter. So I would just, I would be making moves. I'd hit the gym, I'd go back home, I'd eat some lunch, and then I'd, I'd shower, grab my, grab my computer, grab my stuff, and I'd go to Panera Bread and I'd sit there until like 8 p.m. I was in an environment of where I could meet people. Uh, where I could invite people to like, yo, I'm at Panera Bread, come here and let's grind. Or, hey, yeah, if you want to see the information, I'm at Panera Bread. If you want to link up, I can, I can go over, you know, the information. Uh, and so I always just put myself in an environment to win. And it goes even beyond that. I was talking to AJ, as weird as it sounds, I make my bed every single day. There's a book that says, uh, that, that's titled something like making your bed. And it was like a general that wrote the book. It all starts with making your bed. And for me, I make my bed every single day. I get up. Uh, my car is clean because when you're when you're when your house is clean, I, I got cleaners here now. See, I was able to keep grinding, keep grinding, keep grinding. So now other people clean my place so I can stay focused and I can do what I'm good at. And that's what they're good at. And again, I saw this years ago, but it just started with making my bed and keeping my car clean. Because when I pick up someone, when I pick up someone to go to an event, I don't want them getting in my car and it, it smells all weird and there's shit on the floor with old food and, and magazines or whatever. No, dude, we're professionals. And that's what this whole call is about is just becoming a professional in life that will then kind of be a byproduct of you being a professional in this industry. And so environment is key. So make sure your place is clean. You, you make your bed every single day. 142. 142. That was weird. I didn't see any mic on me. There we go. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah, I didn't see any either. Um, make sure you guys' mics are muted. But um, real quick, if you want to talk about, obviously you talked about your environment as far as like where you are and where you're working. But if you want to talk about also your environment as far as people, real quickly i think that's that's just as important mm, that's a key one <laughs> uh, yeah so again i never really people people right you know the, the people that you're you know some of you not probably not even the majority of you are spending 10 minutes with people that you should be spending 10 hours with and vice versa there's people in your life that you're spending 10 minutes with that you should be spending 10 hours with or whatever and i just made it you know it, if i'm not it was very rare I would spend time with people that I grew up with. My best friends, Nick, Nate, Dietrich, and Paul, they barely, they, I barely even talk to them just because we're not on the same wavelength. I love them to death. I'll meet Dietrich out in the mountains this year. We'll go snowboarding, but he's not going to help me elevate and get where I want to go to help me hit my, my goals and dreams. I have conversations with him here and there, but your environment is key. And so 
put yourself in the environment where, where people are winning, people that are building this business. And if they're not, if you, if you aren't around those people, guess what you're going to need to do? Listen to the audios. Ed Milet, he doesn't even know it, but the dude is like my best friend for real. He doesn't even know it, but that dude, it's, it's like, he's my roommate. And uh, I'm just listening to the audios all the time. Um, and so, you know, make sure you're around the right people, make sure you're listening to the right information and, and try to stay away from toxic people. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, so we went over the desire of a dominator environment of a dominator, and now we're on one of your favorites, the discipline of a dominator. So you want to talk about discipline real quick and your viewpoint on that. We'll, we'll go over, yeah. we'll go over consistency later, but just, I'd say, talk about doing like being disciplined on a daily basis. Right. And I, and I made something called the power list of chairman and I, I made it for myself to follow just to be productive every single day. And do I follow it every single day? No. Should I? Hell yeah. Sometimes I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You need to get on that power list. But my day, I mean, every day it's again, I want to be a professional in life. I want to be the best version of myself. I can, you know, I got, you know, 40, 50 years left in this industry. And I want to take this thing as far as I can. And so again, you know, I was talking to AJ this morning about it. It starts with getting in the gym for me, cardio, lifting weights, you can do whatever you want, but getting that heart rate up for an hour is crucial in my life. Because if I don't, I'm just not the same person. I'm fresh, I'm ready. And uh, I feel like I've accomplished the hardest part of the day, which was working out. And so that, that for me, I mean, there's so many studies done, obviously, by from the benefits of just working out alone. Um, and so it, for me, if, if I'm going to follow someone, you know, who are they? Again, do they have the credentials that I want? And, and if they're, you know, in shape or getting in shape and, and they have their, their money right and, and they have their family situation, you know, if they're going to get, that's the type of person that I want to follow. So if that's the type of person that I want to follow, that's the type of person that I want to become because I want people to want to follow me. And so again, I just mirror other people that have what I want and, and the top earners in this industry, not even just this company, but in this industry, I mean, these are some of the highest speed people on the planet. You're getting, the top earners are getting thousands and thousands of people from around the world to follow their beat of the drum. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty high speed thing to do. And a lot of these top earners, they're, they're out, they're working out every single day. They're, they're doing business every single day. They're doing personal development every single day. Um, they're, they, they have a good family situation. I mean, it's just, it's just, it is what it is. It's about becoming, you know, the best version of yourself again. And I just emulate, I just follow the people that have what I want. And, you know, I see these people and I'm like, okay, well, if he's working out like that, if he's showing people like that, if he's doing calls like that, I, I just got to follow him because he has what I want. So discipline, um, and maybe you can elaborate on that too. And then I could probably think of 80 million more things as well, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> discipline. It's, it's, I mean, doing what most people won't. And it's, I mean, I did a call on it a couple months ago. I think it goes back to the ROI. What, what's the, what's the return on your investment? So the action that you're about to take, the words that you're about to speak, the thought that you're about to have what is the ROI on it, right? What's the return on that negative thought? What's the return on those negative words? What's the return on this negative action, right? Or vice versa, the positive thought, positive words, or positive actions. So I think it just comes down to, to really looking at everything from, from an ROI standpoint. And if you do that, you're able to stay a lot more disciplined. Yeah. And then again, it's the slight edge philosophy, right? That, you know, again, a lot of top earners talked about. So I'm like, okay, if they're talking about this, it must be uh, something that I should follow. And it's that simple daily disciplines versus simple daily errors and judgment. So when I do something, uh, I just think to myself, you know, is it going to have a positive or negative ROI? Uh, my, my old mentor said, he, he was speaking about this on that, that audio that I was listening to when I, before I even saw this industry, he gave me that audio, remember? And I put it in my car and, and he said in that audio, he goes, he was talking about the slight edge philosophy, simple daily disciplines versus simple daily, er, da, daily errors and judgment. He said, if AJ eats McDonald's, which he did today, a, a Big Mac, a large fry and a Coke every day, 
for the next year or, or for the next week. And I eat um, chicken, broccoli, and water. Is, is our physique going to look that much different if we have the same starting point? No, not after a week. How about a month? How about a year? How about five years? It's going to start to get crazy and you're going to start to capitalize on some of that compound effect and you're really going to start making gains over the, over, you know, the people that aren't doing those simple daily disciplines. And that's what I focus on. Um, again, I mean, it's everything in my life goes back to the return on the investment is the decision I'm making right now financially. Could I buy a yacht right now? Cash? Yes, I could. It's a depreciating asset. It's, I'm just not in the place where I'm willing to just blow 600 bands on a yacht right now when I could take that 600 and invest in real estate, index funds, crypto. And then where's that going to take me in 10 years from now? It's going to be stupid. And then I could buy 30 of those yachts cash. And so I just think everything that I do, is it going to get me, is it going to move the needle for me? And so that's why discipline for me is so crucial because I have to do those simple daily disciplines every single day. Because if I'm not, I'm just, I'm just holding myself back of where I, where I can be. So. Love it. Um, this is a, a quick one, but one that you're very keen on and uh, you, you've always been on my, my butt for it is uh, health and appearance, right? So I think you can, you can talk about these in two different ways. One, your health as, as an individual and your physique, but also then appearance as far as like professionalism and stuff like that. So you can talk about both. Again, I kind of already discussed the health portion. It's just, it's important. It's important to work out every single day. Um, if I want to be the best version of myself, I got to be in the gym every single day. If, you're, if you haven't been in the gym a while, it doesn't matter. It's all good. Maybe just get in there a couple of days a week to start, but eventually get in there, you know, four or five days a week. Um, and then appearance. Yeah. Again, find people that have what you want. If you like this person's style, um, you know, work on, you know, dressing like them and smelling good, feeling good, looking good. Cause all that together, you're, you're going to become a person if you're not already that a lot of people will want to follow. And so that's, that's pretty much as simple as that. Dude, yeah, I'll tell you this. It's it's funny um, because so me and my fiance, Gabby, for those of you that don't know her, we started, you know, um, dating over a year ago. Um, and it was funny because people used to make fun of me for the clothes that I, I wore. I kind of wear, I'd wear like rundown clothes and I'd kind of look crappy and I wouldn't always keep the best appearance. You know, Wer Werner was probably the biggest one that made fun of me. He typed LOL in the chat. Um, but all of all of these top leaders on my team will tell you right after I started dating Gabby, she kind of, you know, helped me change my wardrobe, make sure that when I was going to meetings, I was looking right. And and my appearance completely shifted. And I just felt a lot better. Like as soon as I started dressing sharper, I'd show up to these meetings. I'm like, dang, I look, I look good. I like how I look, you know, and um the, it, it affected my confidence and you know, me being in shape. I mean, when I'm in shape, I have the most energy that I've had. No, I'm not in the best shape I've ever been in, but I still like, I, I feel good because I'm at the gym every single day. I'm, I'm burning some form of calories. And, and, you know, even though I'm not in peak state, I'm still, I have energy because I get my blood flowing. I look good and I feel good. And I think that's a big part to, to, uh, you know, being successful and being a dominator. So Love that. Um, this is this is a big one. This next one, we got we got two left. So this one, and again, I, I I don't want you to sugarcoat these answers, bro, because I want people to actually know the difference between. There's people that win in this industry, right? There's people that make five k a month, ten k a month, even twenty five k a month. But there's a difference between those people and the people that make millions of dollars and are a dominator, right? So don't sugarcoat these. Obviously, you know, we've we've went in pretty well on these these steps to being a dominator. But these last two, I think, are very, very crucial. So be brutal on them. Um, the, the champion mindset of a dominator. Yeah, 
a lot of people at the snap of the finger, you know, people that are worth billions of dollars will talk about just obsession, just pure obsession. And I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm a big fan of the UFC. And when I listen to a lot of these champions or first, second or third ranked fighters in their division, they all are saying the, the, the they're, they're all pretty much saying the same thing. You know, they, they train their faces off. They're willing to get punched in the face. And, and for me, it's, it's for my family. What gives me a champion mindset? Dude, again, I just want to be the best person myself. And, and I'm the man of the household and I want to give them the best lifestyle on the planet. So it's easy for me. It's easy for me to wake up every single day and get to work and, and see who wants to run and let's go run. I'm not here to hold anybody's hand. I'm not here to, to wait on anybody. But dude, I, and, I, and I love you regardless, but dude, I'm here to, to run with anybody that wants to for as long as you want to. Um, and so, you know, I don't know what it is. Again, you know, maybe it, it's everything stacked in a combination of the desire of, you know, different things that happened to me in my life to give me the, the mindset, but it's just an obsession, plain and simple. Um, I love the thrill of the hunt. And I, I made that, I made the thrill of the hunt, like my friend. And so I know a lot of people beat themselves up, like when they're not having success, especially, you know, if you see month after month go by and you still haven't gained any ground, that's okay. I began, I, I just fell in love with the process. And even when I wasn't where I was at or wanted to be at, or when I only could put $20 in my gas tank for gas, my old upline laughed at me when we did that. We both pulled up to the gas station, our BMWs that we qualified for in a previous company. And he goes, hey, you still put 20 bucks in there? I'm like, dude, hey, man, when you only got a hundred, you can probably only, shouldn't put it all in. Um, but I just was obsessed with, with, with winning and, and doing whatever it took and fell in love with the, with the process in general. And again, what I was saying was, if you can just fall in love with the process and, and look at every single thing that happens to you in this business as a positive thing, that, that's important. Being positive 100% of the time. One of the master distributors of a, another company said, the most important thing in this industry is being positive 100% of the time. You know what I'm talking about. If you're negative, it, it, it's, it's hurting you. So just, if people say no, if people tell you you're stupid, this will never work. If people spam your Facebook page, someone wrote on my Facebook page years ago, scammer, scammer, like a hundred and something times. And I had to sit there and go delete them all. And I just kept thinking to myself, God bless this dude. And you know, what's funny about him? He was a drug dealer. So I'm like, dude, how are you like, how ironic is this? Like you're telling me I'm such a scammer, but you're literally selling something to people that can kill them. Like, I'm not saying I'm a saint because I've, I've done all sorts of crazy stuff, but it's just funny, but I just, everything that happened to me, I looked at, I, I find the positive in it. And so that has served me extremely well in this industry because people that work with me, my uplines, uh, anybody, they, they, they see that no matter what happens, when my, my business partner in this company got terminated, my Alex Martin was like, called me up and said, how are you doing, bro? I said, dude, it's all good, man. I just got to keep going. I only can do what I can do. I don't have control of those things. So why worry about it? Dude, God bless him. I hope he has massive success. I hope he can come back. Either way, it doesn't matter. I got to keep going. I have a team that's counting on me. If you're bringing, this is what I'm talking about. I'm, I, I, I'm building this organization. I have people counting on me. I have my family counting on me. I'm, and I'm looking at it even further than that. What if my dad, my dad had open heart surgery when I was younger? What if something crazy like that happened again? They do not have the money. They do not have the money if something like that happened again. I got it. It's all good. I'm, see, I'm already seeing the future. I don't even, it, it's kind of crazy. And, and maybe some of you can relate. I don't even live in the right now. And sometimes it's annoying. It's like, dude, I'm paying all this rent at, at this freaking, I paid you know 80 grand for the year at, at this condo. And uh, sometimes I'm like, dude, I better just relax for a second. And maybe on my stories, you think I'm relaxing, but in my mind, I'm like, I'm constantly thinking the future. Like if my brother, if he doesn't win financially, am I going to be able to, I want to be able to help him, my sister, uh, my parents, I'm just constantly thinking. So maybe that's a champion mindset. I don't know. But what I do know is I'm obsessed. I'm going to run at 10 and anybody that wants to come with, you can come with. If everybody quit today, 
I'll keep building this sucker. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to stay positive and be like, oh God, God's giving me a hard road. Let's go. It's just building my root system and making me even stronger for when I do hit that next level. So that, that's what I got with the champion mindset. And maybe if you wanted to add to that, um, you can. Oh, dude, I mean, you kill. I, I was thinking about three things in my head when it came to a champion mindset and you literally hit all three of them. Obsession, positive attitude, and think with the end in mind. That's wow. That is, you That's crazy. So no, you literally hit all three in order. Just be positive. That 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 has served me more than anything in the world. I don't care what happens to me. The top earners in the world, not just this industry, get paid by the problems that they can solve. When I hear some people's problem, I'm thinking to myself, "That's a problem, dude. That's a problem for you." <laughs> I mean, I have lost multiple chairmen, my business partner. I mean, I, though, I mean, it has just been crazy. It doesn't, it's all good. God's got a plan. It's all good. I just got to keep running at a 10. If I run at a 10, I don't even see what's going on behind me. I'm just going. That's it. And then you get to walk across stage and they hand you this chairman 100 thing. And then you get nominated and get put in the freaking million dollar a year award. And then your parents are like, what is this million dollar hall of fame? My mother-in-law's calling like, geez, what is going on here? I said, I made a million dollars last year. She's like, you're shitting me. You made a million dollars. I'm like, they're like, what is it? What the fuck is going on here? I just said, I keep going. I just keep going. So, you know, sometimes when, you know, when things are, when there's bumps in the road and there's shit that happens, it's all good. Everything you look at it with a positive light and you just keep on rolling. I love it, bro. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's it. I mean, it's, it's, it's the obsession that not worrying about anything else, but just being obsessed about where you're going, the, the, the positive mental attitude, no matter what happens and, um, and thinking with the end in mind, knowing, knowing. So quick tip, because all of you are leaders on here. When, it, when someone on your team calls you, when a prospect calls you, you get your ass off the chair or if you're laying down wherever you are and you get up with energy and you start bouncing up and down. A lot of my guys know this when they call me and I'm just sitting there like chilling. Even if I was like sitting there playing Fortnite, which I do rarely, but sometimes I do play a little Fortnite because I want to just get off the grid into the meta space for like 10 minutes. Um, dude, if AJ called me or someone called me, I fuck jump out of my chair. Oh, baby, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm telling you. And then that lifts their energy levels. And they're like, dude, this dude's always fired up. Yeah, I was just sitting on the chair and laying down on the couch, but yeah, I'm always fired up. It, perception is reality. Stay fired up for when your team's calling you, give them the energy, the top earners, the top leaders, Charles Schwab, um, one of the biggest investment brokers on the planet. I was reading about him. His number one asset is being able to transfer his energy to the team. That was his number one asset that was able to build the biggest um, brokerage in the world. I think, that, I think that's the biggest key to, to leadership if we're, if we're going to that. I mean, I've had, there's a lot of different definitions of a leader, but I, I've had multiple people ask me like, AJ, what do you think a leader is? And every time my definition of a leader is somebody who's able to transfer energy and belief. You can transfer an energy. If you can transfer enough energy and belief to, to enough people, you can run the country, right? Like if you can transfer energy and belief into people, you can do whatever you want. So I, I think that's the definition of a leader. And, and you can help change people's states as well. Maybe they're not developed yet to the point where you guys are. So maybe they're going through some shit in life. But when they see you just positive over and over and over and they call you and they're a little bummed out and they're struggling with something, but they see you jumping up and down, you're going to lift their spirits. And when you can start lifting people's spirits around you, you know, are you the type of person when you walk into the room, the light just glows or is it a room that dims? I want to be around people that, you know, they're, they're raised, they're, they're, the lights are glowing when I walk, when they walk in, that's the type of people I want to surround myself with. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's some pretty good information there that I probably haven't even ever shared before, but that's, those are some keys. Oh yeah. Um, so we're on the last one. So guys, if you, if you, this one's a big one, um, because it kind of ties into all of them. And so if you guys haven't gotten them yet, step one was desire, right? You have to have the hunger of a dominator, which is, I mean, literally an obsession, right? You, you have to be obsessed with winning and have a strong fuel that's firing you to firing you up to go win every single day. If you don't have something fueling you that, that, that is you hungry every single day, 
you're not going to win. It, it doesn't matter what else you do. You can be the, the best of the best in the industry, but if you don't have hunger, like imagine if Alex Morton, a guy who is the best in the best in the world, a guy like Alex Morton, who is the best in this industry, imagine if he wasn't hungry to win. I mean, he, he wouldn't win. It's simple as that. You have to have desire. Step two is your environment. Not only put yourself in an environment where you feel focused, where you feel you can win, but also surround yourself with people that are only doing what you're doing, right? I was just talking about Mal, to, to Malo uh, about this earlier. We, we were talking on the phone. I said, dude, don't spend time with that person, right? They're, they're not building like you are. They're not going where you're going. There's no reason to spend any time with them, right? It's just the reality of it. So environment, discipline, right? Do, do the right thing every single day. You guys know what you're supposed to do to win. And if you don't, call someone and ask them what you're supposed to be doing every single day. They'll tell you. Somebody who has had big success with this, if you reach out to them and ask them what you need to be doing, they'll tell you. But you got to choose to stay disciplined with it and actually do it every single day. It's the, the daily disciplines. Your health, right? Work out every single day. Get your, your blood flow up. Get your, your energy up. And look the part. If you look and, and smell like the rich version of yourself, like what, what would you look like if you were making a million dollars? Start dressing like that. Start, start spraying the cologne on yourself that you would wear if, if you were making a million dollars, right? David Amenite talks about that. He used to go buy, get the little testers from the cologne store and spray them on himself, the most expensive one, because he wanted to smell like he was rich. And it just triggered his senses to, to be confident and, and be the highest version of himself. So health and appearance, Champion mindset, what, what, what Joey just talked about, being obsessed, you know, having, having a positive mental attitude, no matter what happens, staying positive and thinking with the end of mind, knowing exactly where you're going and almost living in the future. I mean, those five steps to being a dominator are crucial, but this last one ties them all together and it's consistency. So it, it doesn't, those five steps don't matter if you can't do it consistently over a long period of time. So Joey, you can wrap up the call here and just talk about the consistency of a dominator. Yeah, and again, the treadmill analogy. Will Smith says, if we're running on a treadmill and whoever gets off first loses, he said, you're either going to get off first or I'm going to die on that treadmill. And I kind of adopted that mentality in the fact that I'm going to become a top earner in this company. And I'm not talking chairman 100, chairman 750, chairman elite, or I'm going to die. That's the way I'm looking at it. Because again, I'm chasing the best version of myself. And Ed Milet talks about, he said, he believes that when he dies and he goes to heaven, he's going to meet the best version of himself. The Lord will introduce him. And are you going to be complete strangers or are you going to be like long lost twin brothers? And so I kind of think of that, whether that's a real thing or not, I'm like, that'd be crazy. If I got introduced to the best version of myself that I could have been, are we going to be complete strangers or are we going to be like twin brothers? And so I don't know that that's super cool to me. And uh, the way I explain, like, as far as consistency goes, I tell people this all the time. I mean, it's, it's literally, it's just been a combination of me beating my head against the wall for the last 10 years. That's it. It's not hard. This is not hard work. It's a mental game. You just got to keep going. You just got to keep positive. You got to stay focused. Go fail as many times as you can. The person that fails the most wins. That's how this works. But most people are in the 90% and not in the 10% because they can't handle failure after failure. But that's the crazy part about it. That's actually how you win. So if you adopt that mentality, like it's all good if I fail, it's all good if shit happens. Because if you just keep going, you're eventually going to win. And so if you got all the top earners in the world to come up on stage and say the number one thing, most of them would just say consistency. It is what it is. If AJ gets his whole team for an event, all the leaders up there, what's, how, how, are you, how are you able to do it? Consistency. That's it. You just stay consistent for long enough to win. And then you win. So I'm sure you could elaborate on that, but... Yeah. I mean, I, I was just uh, talking to somebody earlier today and I, I told them the only reason that I'm at where I'm at because I just stuck around. I was too stupid to quit. 
Like I literally just kept going and going. We say we're too stupid to quit, but that's actually the, we're too, we're too smart to quit because we know what we have our hands on if we just keep going. Yeah. I, I, I guess it's, you know, like in, in the moment, it seems stupid when you're, you, when you make all this money and then you go back to zero and you're making absolutely nothing, it makes zero sense to keep going. And that's why it seems stupid, but I, in actuality, it's the smartest thing you could do because when you break down and, and you hit rock bottom and you keep going, it's the smartest decision you can make because you're just so, reading that consistency. So one of the things I do where I invest my money in, in one part is index funds, right? It's the S&P 500. So I, I, I consistently dollar cost average in index funds. I've put in 270 grand in these index funds. And I know for a fact by, by historical data that this, it grows on average 10% per year. And right now my $270,000 or it was 275,000. It's in the negative 200. My investment is in the negative two, or it's in the negative five grand. I'm like, shouldn't I be in the positive, like tens of thousands of dollars, but most people, they get scared and they start pulling out their money. And that's why it's dipping even farther. And I'm like, I don't even care. It doesn't even matter. I'm going to keep buying in. Just like in crypto, people do the same thing. But guess what? If I stay consistent long enough, that 270 alone, if I don't put any more money into it, it's going to start to grow. The, the interest I'll be earning will be, will surpass ridiculously. It, you could go to the compound calculator and type it in. What is 270 grand at 10% over the next 30 years make? That 270 will be nothing compared to what's actually in that account if, just by the interest that's getting paid. So my point is this, the, the effort that I put into this business when I first started was ridiculous. I mean, you know, I was gone every day from a Starbucks to a McDonald's, to a Caribou, to a Panera Bread, to a live event. I mean, just constantly showing as many people as I could, as fast as I could. And I would be going five steps forward, to, to then get knocked back 10 steps. And it was just constant uphill battle to win. But because I stayed consistent long enough and I kept pushing, it's just, now it's to the point like where my index funds will be one day where at first you're overworked and underpaid like crazy, but eventually it's gonna flip for every single one of you and you're gonna be overpaid and underworked and you're going to be just living off of that compounded interest. And you're going to start to laugh. Like <laughs> when you see the check, you're going to be like, this is crazy. I did a 9 PM overview last week, every day, just a 9 PM overview and made $25,000 this week. I mean, it, it's just going to start to get ridiculous, but that's the beauty of it for the people that stay the course for long enough to actually be able to win. And everybody's timelines a little different, but guess what? If you just showed three a day, every day, I guarantee you, you will be a top earner in this industry. Love so it. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense as far as the index funds goes, but it makes sense in my mind. Everything's a freaking, I'm yeah. like a, I'm like a calculator. I was just doing it. So $270,000 growing 7%. I didn't even do 10%. It is 7% a year after 20 years. That's the number over a million dollars. Oh, one million. Yeah. Yeah, a million dollars. So if I don't put any more money into it. If you don't put any more money. That's what people are retiring off of just in general. Like my dad, he's retiring from Anderson Windows. He has a million dollars in his, in his account. And yeah, look at that. So that's made me, we take one million minus the 270,000. That's the profit that I earned on interest of doing nothing. But at first you're going to be taking hits. I'm in the red. I'm farther in the red than I thought this thing was going to go. And if it goes farther, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to stay consistent. And over time, I'm going to live off the fruits of the labor. And I just want every single one of you guys to do the exact same thing with this business and with your investments and, and, and be smart and make the right decisions every single day. I'm reading in this book called Atomic Habits. One thing I read that I really liked was we all deal with setbacks, but in the long run, the quality of our lives depends on the quality of our habits. With the same habits, you'll have the same results, but with better habits, anything is possible. Again, it's just, it's just what AJ was talking about is, um, what, what is it again? The, the, the interest on your decisions, the ROI, 
the ROI, yeah, yeah. Is it a negative or positive ROI on the decisions that you're making? You know, or going out to the party. What are the what's the ROI on spending three hundred dollars at a bar over the weekend and, and being hungover? What could you do with that same three hundred dollars, or what could you do with that same amount of time to get a positive ROI? So everything I do, and, and it's kind of a, it's 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 being a little bit nuts, but I think the champions are a little bit nuts, and that's okay. Um, I don't know if I just got here because you're born like it, or if you just take you know, it's small wins compounded over time, you know, for 30 days, work on showing even, even, you can make a chart for yourself, show one person a day for the next 30 days. If you haven't been doing a lot of activity, just strive for that one person a day and check the box and then do it for 90 days and then do it for 120 days and, and start to build those habits and those disciplines over time. And then eventually it's like brushing your teeth. Like, Hey, Joey, are you going to show anybody today? I don't know. Does a bear shit in the woods? Like, this is what I do. I have to do this. I have no other option. Don't give yourself any other option. This is it. If not this, then what? I mean, honestly, think about that for a second. If, this, if not this, then what? If you have something great going on, dude, God bless you. Most people know that you know, we don't have anything else other than this because this is it. There's nothing else that can give you a better life than this right here. So am I showing people today? all day, every day. I have to. Why do I have to? Because I got to eat. Even if I have money, I don't care. I live like I'm broke. I, I paid this condo up front for the year cash and I have no bills. I live like I'm broke. I'm not kidding you. Ask Britt. She's like, hey, should we go to Sprouts today and get a burrito? I'm like, we just ordered groceries. What do we need a burrito for? <laughs> like, dude, I'm maximizing every dollar. I'm maximizing every minute. And I'm just staying focused because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's a real thing. And I can only shake you so hard and, and maybe you'll figure it out, but it's not going to be this sweet forever. One hour right now of work is going to be about 20 hours of work in, in, in two, three years from now. So put in the work right now and just get it done because then when the other people come back and they try to get it going and, and yes, they will. Sure. But again, they're going to be doing 20 hours just to get that same dollar for, you know, hour you got out of that bang for the buck there. And so just put in the work now, collapse the time frames, get it done. So you can have peace of mind that you just got the money thing figured out when you're young. And then you put that money, not into Lamborghinis, but into investments, smart investments. So you don't have to worry about anything and you don't have to chase people and beg them to join your business. They're going to join you because of the smart decisions that you made day after day, month after month, year after year. And then you're going to wake up one day and be like, wow, I've been able to serve and help a lot of people. And they want me to come speak on stage. And, and my family's good. And my family, my kids, kids are good. And um, I just think about all these things. You know, why do you do this business? Think about that for you. And again, I want all of you to be able to come on here and share your experiences and your stories. So that, that's what I got, guys. I know we got the deal. There's no question about it. And um, you guys are the ones that were running this thing all the way to the top with it. Yeah, man. I, I appreciate you hopping on here. The, I mean, the only thing I wanted to add um, is is a cool story <clears throat> that I was reading about. And this, if this isn't the epitome of a dominator, and it kind of goes to what you were just talking about. And if you have anything else to say after this, then we can, we can be done. But it was a, a story of Kobe Bryant. And I think this is the epitome of a dominator, somebody that literally is doing whatever it takes to win. There's people in this industry who just aren't going to do what it takes. That's, that's, and like you said, you can only shake people so much. Like we can only shake you so much, guys. I, I can't teach you to, to have hunger. I can't teach you to want it. We, we can't teach you to actually want to go win. We can teach you what it takes, but at the end of the day, you actually have to move your legs hit the slides and, and do the work. Um, but it's a story of Kobe Bryant. And he used to, he, he was, he was doing an interview and they asked him what his daily schedule was. And he said that he got up at three o'clock in the morning and people were like, why'd you get up at three o'clock in the morning? And he said, because he noticed that everybody else got up around six or 7 AM. So he would get up at three o'clock in the morning so he could go work out from four to 6 AM and get a workout in before everybody else was even awake. And then he would work out from four to six, go home, eat breakfast with his kids, take his kids to school, go back to the gym, nine to 11, eat lunch, do some work, some business work or whatever it was, go back to the gym two to four, pick up his kids from school, go home, eat dinner with them and be back in the gym seven to nine. 
And so he got an extra workout in every single day for five years. And he said that extra workout compounded into him being 10 times better than everybody else that joined the league at the same time as him. And it wasn't, it, it, it didn't even matter five years from then he knew he was so far ahead. It didn't matter. Like you just said, if somebody put in 20 extra hours that week, it didn't even matter because he was already so far ahead of everybody else in the league because of that extra workout that he just decided to do every single day. And, uh, the, the part of that in, interview too, there was another pro basketball player there. And this pro basketball player said that they were playing the Lakers that night. And uh, he, he went in early that afternoon to go shoot, uh, go, go shoot some shots. This, this pro guy, I forgot his name. He was on one of the other teams. Like I said, they were playing Lakers. So he goes in to shoot some, some shots and Kobe's already there in a full sweat. And this guy's getting a, get a whole workout in, not, not Kobe, the, the other pro ball player, he's getting a whole workout in shooting his shots, you know, doing his normal routine and everything. And he looks over Kobe's still there. So, he, you know, he shoots a little bit longer and, and really gets a lot of shots in way more than he normally does. And he looks over Kobe's still there drenched in sweat, doing full on game moves, not, you know, just these little practice moves. And then finally the pro guy left and Kobe was still there working out. They come back that night. The Lakers ended up blowing them out by like 20 points. And that pro basketball player went over to Kobe and he said, I, I just got to ask you, man, like, how, how long were you in that gym? And, and why, did, why did you say so long? And he said, because I knew you were in there and I knew that I was going to outwork you no matter what it, whatever it took. And so it's just the mindset of a dominator of like, no one will outwork me and I will do the extra mile every single day for years so that at some point I'm so far ahead that nobody else can even catch up. And my consistency has reaped the rewards a thousand times over. So I just wanted to tell that story because I think that is the epitome of a dominator and you can wrap it up with whatever you want. Listen, guys, we got 50 minutes. Take the next 50 minutes, go shoot out as many messages as you can, but nothing will ever beat the phone call. Nothing will ever beat them hearing the passion in your voice. And that's why when you take people that are having success, right? You know, Jan Munderlo, who just hit Chairman 50, I'm working on to figure out what, what they're doing out there in Germany for him to hit Chairman 50, just like everyone was figure, trying to figure out what we did when we all went, you know, Chairman and everyone was blowing up. Um, and so like Maldo, what was he doing? You know what he was doing? He didn't even know what he was saying. He didn't care. He didn't even care how awkward it was. He was calling everybody and just fired up and just rapid fire to everybody just saying, yo, you got to get on this call. I'm telling you, I'm going to help you. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to change your freaking life, bro. We're working with some of the sharpest people on the planet, trading, making money, passive residual income. It's not going to be easy, but I promise you it's going to be worth it. Get on this call, dude, and let's get you started. I'm not taking no for an answer because I'm taking you to the top with me. I mean, it's just pure excitement and people follow that energy. And so invite like crazy to this 10 PM call. And all I want at this point in my life is for every single one of you to make more than full-time income, more than enough money where you just have peace of mind in your life because it's possible in this company. And again, if not this, then what it's game time, baby. I appreciate AJ for one, for doing these calls. Um, these, these calls are so important. So every week, Make sure that your entire team are on these calls. The value is ridiculous. He has a YouTube channel with the entire thing recorded. And when he speaks, you know, most of you don't know this yet. The dude is, is a chairman 750 in the making and he knows it. I know it. it's just a matter of time before God's timing meets with his preparation and it actually happens. But uh, he's one of the best in the business. I truly believe that. And he has a whole YouTube channel of all of his recorded um, thrive calls and make sure you invite everybody to these calls because they're, they're money and people need to be around the fire. People need to get the correct information to capitalize. So every single person that you bring in gets started on the right foot. I've brought in so many people to this industry and I didn't get them started right. And I'm like, damn it, maybe they still would have been here. Maybe I would have built a better foundation. Maybe I'd be chairman 250 by now, but it's all good. 
we can't look back. We got to keep looking forward, but it starts with right now, what we're going to do right now. When we get off this call, when the motivation goes away, are you going to do what you said you're going to do and actually go hit chairman 10 in the next 90 days, 120 days. Are you going to walk stage in Palm beach? Well, it's going to start with that 10 PM call. It's going to start with you ripping presentations like normal Mar, ripping phone calls and let's go make this thing happen. I appreciate everybody for hopping on here. If you need anything, let me know. And let's take this thing to the top. Appreciate y'all. Let's get it. Let's go.